Hello everybody, another day, another video. Another hike. <laughs> and if you have seen any of our videos, you know how hikes go for us. If you see this video, that means we've made it back somehow. And yeah, we've actually did a hike here, was it last week? Mm -hmm. It did not go as planned. Yeah, anyway, we'll Oops, leave it good. at that. <laughs> you ready, Kenai? You clicked on this video because you wanna know if RV life is expensive or cheap. Guess what, we're here to tell you all about it. We're not gonna share what we spend each month, I don't know, maybe we'll do that in a future video. If you'd like to see that, leave a comment, make sure you subscribe and like this video and we'll make one soon. But anyway, we're not gonna share exactly what we spend each month because it just varies for everyone. Everyone's gonna be different. Everyone's RV lifestyle is different, which is great. So we're gonna go over the main expenses, at least for us and that we've seen for other RVers. For us, we do not travel like normal RVers at all because due to Chase's work, if you've seen, this video or this video. You know that Chase is a welder. We stay at RV parks, I would say 99% of the time. The 1% yep. is truck stops. We don't boondock. We don't have any boondocking equipment. So it is possible to do RV life and not boondock. We stay at places mainly a month at a time, three weeks usually, I guess. For Chase's work, it really just depends. Monthly, Monthly for, sure. for sure. And it's cheaper that way for us. With that being said, we're gonna cover all the expenses that you may embark if you do this RV life journey. Some you may not, some you probably will, but we're just gonna cover everything. The three biggest expenses are gonna be your truck, RV, and your RV parks. So the first one is your RV. Now that's just really gonna depend, or your rig, on what you plan on doing. We have a fifth wheel, we have a 2010 Montana. We actually recently gave an RV tour, so watch this video. We bought it used. The way I found it was I went to a few different dealerships, actually a ton of dealerships. I found this model. I went on RV Trader, plugged in the specs, and voila, I found this camper. Sorry, it's really bright. And I actually found it 10 grand cheaper than what the dealership was wanting for it. And we also did not own a truck at the time. So we had it hot shotted to the place that we were gonna be at for a while for Chase's work. We paid cash for our camper. So we do not have a camper payment. Now, we also did not have a house or anything to sell. When we started RV life, we were actually like pretty broke. When Chase traveled, he stayed at primarily motels, not hotels, but like motels. We saved for probably about a year. Year and a half. Year and a half. And we bought the rig that we have now. So it is possible to not own a house and to do this RV life because I think the norm is people own some sort of like house or something, sell it, buy a truck and camper. That was not our situation. So it really just depends on your budget. What kind of camping do you want to do? Do you want to do more off-grid camping, boondocking? Are you want to do more RV parks? Do you want a luxury camper? Are you okay with an older camper? So it really just depends on what you want to do and what's in your budget. And for us, used was the best thing for us. So another thing just remember is if you buy new or used, you can't pay cash for it, you might have a camper payment. And that's just gonna really vary on everything. Another thing is truck, or if you have a motorhome, maybe like a tow vehicle. So for us, we have a 2023 yep. Ram 3500. We do have a payment on it, and that's just our choice. We also only have one vehicle. I know I've been seeing quite a few RVers with two vehicles. They'll have whatever vehicle they use to tow, and then they'll have another vehicle as well. We only have one vehicle. With owning a vehicle, there's also maintenance. Like you'll have, what do you call them? Oil changes. The oil changes, regular maintenance standard stuff. Being, yeah, yeah, standard, standard vehicle, vehicle maintenance. maintenance. And you also have like, you know, tires and all that stuff. You also have maintenance on your camper, but that's like owning a home. You're also gonna have maintenance on your home oh, yeah. as well. So that's just part of it. Rig, truck, if you have payments on it or you pay cash for it. Another thing is RV parks. You know, RV parks are starting to get a little expensive. I'm not gonna lie. Now, we stay at full hookups. After this summer, he's done. <laughs> he walked a good bit though. I give it to him. Yeah. After this summer, we've realized that we're gonna start boondocking more in the summer when Chase isn't working. Now when Chase is working, we stay at full hookups because with Chase being a welder, he needs to take a shower every day. So we stay at places that have full hookups. And the RV parks we stay at when Chase works at usually rains around, rains, ranges around like the five to 600 bucks a month. Mark, now that can include electric or not electric, so that also varies as well. Now this summer, because we did not plan well, we were kind of at the whim 
of whatever RV parks were available for us this summer at the places we wanted to go and see. And I think on average we paid around, I think we decided it was around 1200 a month is what we were paying this summer. Yeah. For RV parks and that was for full hookups. Now, where we're at currently, we are paying 900 a month. We're in Branson right now. That's a whole nother story. Just watch our Branson video whenever that comes out. There are places that are cheaper, like state parks, Corps of Engineer places that are cheaper, but you do have to plan those out in advance because sometimes, like if you want to stay there weeks at a time, you need to book ahead of time because those do fill up. I feel like a lot quicker because they are cheaper. We're just letting you know that there are cheaper RV parks. You just have to plan ahead. For us and with Chase's work, we have to be really flexible. So we don't have the luxury majority of the time to book ahead. Look how pretty this is this over is here. This beautiful. This is really pretty. Didn't even know this was over here. Yeah, I didn't either. I'll leave a link to this little trail that we're on. It's flat. There's no up or down or steps where we're at right now. So this is really pretty. So for us, we have decided that we are going to start boondocking more just to save that money on RV park spots. Now, we didn't really know that boondocking was a thing when we first started because we just didn't really know much about it, I guess. And it really wasn't a thing on our radar. You know what you know. and Yeah, it's... exactly. And we also see ourselves doing this for the long run. I think we'll be doing this for a while to where all the boondocking equipment will pay for itself after a while. So why are you panting? You didn't even walk that much. So for us, we do see the boondocking equipment, solar, better batteries, generator and stuff being beneficial to us. I would also ask yourself, if you do plan on boondocking, take into consideration the stuff that is gonna require you to boondock, even just the basic necessities to boondock and see if it's gonna be cheaper to just stay at RV parks or boondocking is gonna really save you money. But if you just wanna boondock just to boondock and you're like, I'll just spend the money, then that's totally fine. It's just whatever you want to do. But we're just being honest about all the expenses. Yes. When it comes to boondocking. And use your skill set to maybe barter or trade. You know, you might be a website designer and you might be able to trade. Yeah. You know, creating web, you know, building a website for, you know, something. There's always ways to make anything more affordable. We do have some things planned. One, we can't share with you yet. And two, that we're super excited about. So make sure you are subscribed because we're going to take you along our boondocking setup as we go. Mm -hmm. We'll share how much we spend on everything because we want to be able to help as many people as possible and to share our experiences, whether they're similar or not, learn something or maybe teach us something. So, or you can do a thousand trails or different memberships. We do not have a thousand trails membership. It's a campground where you, I really don't know how exactly it works. You like you buy into it or something and you get like discounted things or something. That is also a possibility. We do not have it. We don't have good Sam or anything like that. The only membership that we have is escapees. We also just bought harvest toast. We haven't used it yet. So make sure you stay tuned for when we use harvest toast. We don't own any of those memberships because for us, we don't see it being beneficial. Now, if you have the ability to travel anywhere you want to, whenever you want to, then maybe things like a thousand trails would be beneficial for you. Not for us. All right. So those are your three biz biggest business, bleh, biggest expenses, RV, truck, and your camp spot, yeah. however that may look like. For sure. So a few things that are going to cost you that people just don't realize are activities. We are currently in Branson. Y'all stuff is not cheap. Activities are not cheap. We've spent, I wouldn't say a ridiculous amount on activities, but we've definitely spent a fair amount. Can you say so? Yeah, at least a thousand. Yeah, probably really. Yeah, on everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you know, either you is, live life like, or you don't, if you don't. Yeah, exactly. Either yeah. you do it or you don't. It's yeah, one, yeah. It's, 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 if you don't want to spend the money, don't spend the money on it. So that's, yeah. that's the, it really that's just depends thing. on where you're at too. Like we, Chase has worked a few times in Virginia. We love going to museums, oh, historical yeah. places. I love going into the president's homes. Those are always so much fun. I'm forward to about the whole boondocking setup and boondocking on free land is the savings that, not that we've said, oh, we can't do this because we've spent it on an RV park or, yeah. or things like that. But I think being able to take the thousand to goodness, maybe $2,000 a month on savings for not yeah. staying in an RV park, that's just gonna free us up to do a let us to do more yeah. float trips. We like to fly uh, fly fish. Now it may be harder in some areas to boondock or 
places like museums might be more expensive in other areas. Like if you go more towards the East Coast, it might be harder to do boondocking. So you might just have to, you know, pay whatever the campsites are, you know, and that's just how it is. So some areas are going to be cheaper than others when it comes to RV parks yeah. and activities. <laughs> like here in Branson, there are bundle deals that you can do with certain things that, you know, make it a little bit cheaper and stuff. Now, when we were in Black Hills, South Dakota, I really don't think we spent that much on activities because we paid for, I think it was like, what, 20, 30 bucks for mm -hmm. the Custer State Park Pass. We used that pass a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, we did a ton with that pass. And even other things didn't really cost that much either. No. So it really just depends on the area as well that you're at. Some places are just going to be more expensive than others. That's just how it is. So activities, those are going to cost... It just really depends on what activities you like to do. We like museums. Some people may not like museums. Eating out. Do you plan on eating out everywhere you go? We don't really eat out that much. Now we have eaten out a little bit more than usual since we've been here in Branson, but just watch our Branson video whenever that comes out. I think it's it's not crucial for anyone to eat out. I mean, if, I mean, if you only just eat at your camper or at the house, then that's, that's the, there's nothing wrong with that. I like cooking our own meals anyway, but because mm -hmm. we like to be able to go and socialize with people and getting to know the area. And I think, it's nice that we do go eat at a few places when we do go back or if we do, yeah. then yeah. we might only eat at one just yeah. because like that was the better one to eat at. I know it can be so exciting when you do RV life and you're like, man, I am just going to do everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat out at all the places that everyone recommends, do all the activities and it can just it can get really expensive, y'all. I'm not going to lie. It can get really expensive. You know, oh, yeah. right towards us. Uh -oh. <laughs> Really cool. Now that's cool. Or really any sort of activities, costs that I think a lot of people just don't think about when it comes to RV life. Now, we are going to hop on to other expenses. One is Wi-Fi. What kind of Wi-Fi are you going to use? We just used our phone and RV park Wi-Fi for the first, what did you say, two and a half years mm -hmm. of RV life. It was More okay. so of our phone playing yeah. in <laughs> yeah. Wi-Fi mm -hmm. at RV parks. Yeah, we have AT&T Unlimited and we would just use our phone as a hotspot if we needed to. I think there's only been one RV park that would actually charge extra for Wi-Fi yes. that we've been to. Yes, in Arizona. Yeah, which I think was bogus. But anyway, <coughs> especially for how much they were charging. So you need to ask yourself what kind of Wi-Fi you want to use. We use Starlink just because on a safety aspect, you can use Starlink when you don't have any cell service. And they just upgraded the plan to where you can do it. I use it yeah. in motion. In which motion, is just yeah. Fantastic. So they did go up, I think, 15 bucks a month on the so plan. 175 a month now, I believe. Uh, 165 because we oh, pay 165, one. Yeah. That's right. You do have an upfront cost for the actual Starlink itself, and then you pay monthly as well. Now you can turn it on and off whenever you want to each month. So if there's a month that you're for sure not going to use it, you can just turn it off and save the 165. I know some people, there are so many different internet options out there for yeah, like boosts and stuff. We've all seen them on YouTube. Yeah. It's and they might, they might work, but you know what? I think Starlink is the best and I'm yeah. biased to yeah. Starlink. Yeah. Sometimes heavily, heavily wooded areas, it can kind of cut in, yeah. cut in and out, but we've been in the mountains and the tree and we've been in, mm -hmm. I mean, on the East. I mean, it, it's, it's worked perfectly fine. We, yeah. we were able to make calls. We were able to upload videos, work yeah. from it. And so mm -hmm. it's, yeah. yeah. Now, I know 165 can be quite a bit for internet. There are other cheaper options out there. Honestly, just Google or YouTube mm -hmm. and you'll find a ton of videos. So there are options out there if you're like, man, I can't afford that. But for us, having so many different options, for me, it's just really overwhelming to keep up with that many things. Oh, yeah. Because I know myself, I'm gonna accidentally forget. <laughs> I'm gonna be having two different Wi Fi going. or something, yeah. and then exactly. you get to cut one off and yep. then you so, end up double paying. <laughs> for us, it's just best to just have one thing. We've had it for almost a year now and absolutely love it 10 out of 10. So, another thing is health insurance. We have our own health insurance. We don't have anything through Chase's work because Chase works for a bunch of different companies. And it's just easier for us to have our own health insurance. Obviously, do your own due diligence with health insurance. Another thing about insurance is vehicle and rig, whatever type of rig you have, insurance as well. We pay upfront each year for our insurance and we save, was it like 20% or something yes. like that? So, like two months worth, I think, yeah, is what it comes out to. Two months free or two, yeah. yeah. 
So you are gonna have insurance. It's just bills that come out every month that you don't realize sometimes. Another thing is phone bill. Like we said, we had at and You're still gonna have a phone bill. Subscriptions. Do you have like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, any other type of subscriptions or, you know, things that you support each month. Like I have a editing software and a, like a music thing that I use for the videos each month. So I have those subscriptions. I would honestly look each month or a few months at your bank statement, like at like a month worth of bank statements and just see what's coming out each month because you might be surprised. Another thing, well, we kind of already talked about vehicle, uh, vehicle maintenance, but you're also going to mm -hmm. have rig maintenance, whatever type of rig or camper you have, or even motorhome you have, you're going to have maintenance. We have been very blessed that our maintenance really hasn't been that yeah. astronomical. Maybe you have to reseal something, you know, new tires. We have had to replace a few things. We did a whole video of stuff that's broken in the past three years, three and a half years of RVing, kind of give you an idea. If you are able to do it yourself, that's going to save you a ton of money. About like a thousand bucks is kind of what we decided yeah. it is. So like every time we used to call out RV tech, not anymore. I am the, we are the RV tech. It was about a thousand bucks, thousand bucks for this, thousand bucks for that. That really will put a sour taste in your mouth. I mean, that makes it just like, when yeah. you start having those issues, they weren't back to back. They weren't like, you know, once a month, but when you have issues like that, it's like, that, that kind of hurts. And it's like, yeah. my goodness. And then you kind of do your own due diligence and look at the parts and see how much they cost. And then like, well, I, hey, I could figure out that myself. I could do that myself. And so that's what I've been doing. And Let's say an average five grand a year. Well, if you can do it yourself, you can at least cut it in half. At least, at least. At least. Now I understand like you can't fix your rig yourself. You have to have help come and do it. I completely understand that, but we're just letting you know that's just kind of how it is. Mm -hmm. Some areas are gonna be more expensive than others. We do not take our camper in anywhere to a, a dealership or anything like that. We've never done that. We've always either had someone come out or we do it ourselves. So I also forgot groceries. No matter where you're at, you're gonna have to eat somehow. Groceries are gonna be more expensive in some areas than not. You might have to drive further to get cheaper groceries. I think for myself this summer, I've learned to meal plan a little bit better, try mm -hmm. to at least, so that way I can bulk buy before we go to some destinations because we did have to pay a little bit more in some areas than I was wanting I mean, to. Custer, South Dakota, for instance, Black Hills, Gosh, there expensive. was a grocery store there and it was, and it, it was had everything nice. you needed. Yeah. Rapid City was a good hour mm -hmm. and 15 minutes away, I, I, you yeah. know, hour and a half away. So yeah, you're not doing that every day. No, no. And you know, it was a nice grocery store, but we try to buy certain brands that are a little bit healthier and those were just like expen expensive. So you just kind of have to, yeah. So groceries are, it's gonna be one of those things that it's just, it is what it is. Another thing is pets. Kenai, you're expensive. Just kidding, he's really not that expensive. He, it's gonna be the same whether you're in a house or not. If you have pets, food's gonna be the same. We buy his food at Tractor Supply. We don't really spend a whole lot of money on him. We did a whole pet video that kind of, I guess sort of breaks down the cost of what we spend on him each year. It's going to be the same whether you're in a camper or not. Yes. Now we do have to buy poop bags. So that's pretty much the only thing. Like if you're at your own place, you might not have to buy poop bags, but mm -hmm. we buy them at Home Goods, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross, or Costco, because those are all the cheapest places. Don't go to a pet store. Another thing is donations, investments, tithes. If you tithe to a church, you know, however that may look like, it's still going to be the same. Yep. Another thing is laundry. We do not have a washer or dryer of any sorts in our camper. We do a laundry mats. Laundry can get a little expensive. I'm not going to lie in certain areas. Mm -hmm. Now, when Chase is working, we do, or I do, a lot more laundry than when he's not working. So we can definitely blow through like over 20 bucks each week on laundry for sure. Maybe yeah. even more. It just depends on the area. I don't think we will get a laundry no. washer dryer or whatever in our camper at all. I don't mind laundry mats. Yeah, they just add weight. We have people who have them and absolutely love them. And we've had people who've had them and absolutely hated them. So it's just kind of what you want to do, but you will have to pay for laundry. Oh, just random things like clothes. Are you buying clothes often or not? Yes. Are you doing haircuts? Chase is going to get a haircut today. I would honestly kind of look at how you spend your money each month or for six months and see like what is consistent and then what you can either, like if you want to make it cheaper, what can you take away or cut down and stuff. Even like hair care, beauty stuff, you know, hygiene products, those are all going to be, so got to buy deodorant and toothpaste. Yes. So we do brush our teeth. So another thing is RV subscriptions. We kind of talked about already, like Harvest Host, Escapees, RV accessories. Y'all, I love the RV community. I really do, but. There are way too many accessories out there. You don't need half, you don't need a, I don't know. Uh, you don't need them. 
I love y'all so much. You know, I know some of our accessories or work wonders for some people. For us, we try to be very minimalistic when it comes to our accessories. Cause one, call me lazy. I just don't like unpacking and packing our camper. Mm -hmm. And the less stuff we have means the quicker it will be. And it's just more things to maintain, to break, clean, all that stuff. So we did a whole video of RV accessories we don't own. And even then, like it can get expensive. Someone will be like, oh, you, you know, this has been a game changer, blah, blah, blah. We try to live without stuff for a long time. Then we'll re-examine and then we'll yes. buy it. That's just kind of how we've done it. But <sighs> I love y'all, but it just gets too expensive. Another thing is souvenirs. We like stickers. Uh, we also do ornaments. We buy like metal ornaments of places we've been to. Same thing. I try to become picky or I try to be picky with the ornaments because you're like, oh, I got to get an ornament at this place. Oh, I don't really like it, but I'll just buy it anyway. If I'm not 100% like I like it, then I don't buy it. And mm -hmm. I think that should be with anything. If it's not 100% yes, then it's a no. That's kind of the main, I think I pretty much covered all the expenses. I think so. I think so. But honestly, if you are wanting to do RV life and you're like, I don't know like how cheap or anything like that, or kind of what your budget is, I would look at places that you're wanting to go to, see how much RV parks cost, so you can kind of get an idea, see how much campers are gonna cost and all that stuff. And just kind of run some numbers and see what it's gonna cost because you're still gonna have all these expenses. We still have a phone bill, we still have health insurance, we still have subscriptions. And we've had some people, I know when we first started doing this, reached out and saying like, oh, how cheap is it going to be? And it really just depends on what you want to do. Are you moving every week? Well, that's going to cost more because you're going to get a better deal monthly rates at RV parks versus weekly rates or nightly rates. Oh, yeah. You move more, it's going to be more diesel or gas. You got to ask yourself, how often do you want to move? And then kind of go from there as well, because some people kind of had this assumption when we first started doing this, that it was free or at least like dirt cheap because mm -hmm. we live in a camper. Oh, it must be dirt cheap. It can be like if we didn't have a truck payment, it would be cheaper. We don't have a camper payment, so that's cheaper right then. If we didn't have an RV park spot, that would be cheaper. Mm -hmm as well. But you may be like, I want to have full hookups all the time. We know people who only do full hookups. That's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. Yep. I like having full hookups. I like taking long, hot showers and, you know, washing my dishes all the time and stuff. So I think it just depends on what you want to do. Yes. There are cheaper RV parks out there. You just have to look for them and plan ahead. Yep. Because that's just, that's just how it is. So for us, we are going to cut back on RV parks in the summertime or when Chase is off so that way we can save some money that way. Kenai is just here for the treats. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. How about when we get home, I'll get you one. For sure. I know, I didn't bring you any. I need to start bringing you treats, buddy. I'm so sorry. I gotta stop saying that word to you. Love you. Oh, you're so cute. Also, can I tell our friends to like, comment, and subscribe? Especially subscribe. Our goal is to get 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That is our goal. When we get to 2,000, we're gonna start doing lives once a month and ask all the questions. You can ask all the questions, hang out, and yeah, so I hope this video kind of, I hope one, I hope it doesn't discourage you. We don't want to discourage anyone at all with the expenses. No. We just, we just want to be honest and upfront with people. Yeah. That's really one of, the, one of the many reasons why we've started the YouTube channel is you see things from other RVers online. We've seen some that are very truthful and honest, but then some of them uh, were like, oh my goodness, that is just, that is not the case. Yeah. So, but, and everyone's financial situation is different. You can do this as cheap or as expensive as you want it to be. For us, I think we're kind of in the middle ground. We do stay at RV parks. We try to stay at cheaper RV parks as much as we can. We do like going and seeing stuff because we're like, if we're in the area and if that's something we want to do, then we'll do it. We either maybe won't go out to eat. Mm -hmm. or we'll just, you know, cut back on something else. So it just depends on what you want to do. Yes. But like Chase said, we just want to be honest with people. I know it can kind of be a little discouraging in a way. We Perfect. know some people that all they'll do is boondock as much as they can just because they want to save money that way. And you could save a lot of money, my goodness. Yeah. But I would say too, if you're like, man, I only want to do RV life for a year. If you want to boondock, you're like, well, I really want to boondock. That's fine. That's totally fine. But if you're doing it more on the savings aspect, I would really look into the numbers of what your setup is going to cost and then divide it by 12 months or six months or however long 
and see if it's actually going to be worth it or if it's just going to be cheaper to do RV parks from where you're at. Yeah. But if you're like, I just want to boondock because I just want the experience of that, then that's fine. Let's totally do that. If you're wanting it more on the financial cheaper aspect, then I would crunch in some numbers oh, yeah. and see. For sure. Because for us, for a while, all we did was RV parks. There was no need for us to buy certain things yeah. because we just never use them. I hope that sort of encouraging, not discouraging. I hope you don't get discouraged by this. Because if, yeah, if you're still, we're not going to change anything. No, we wouldn't no, change anything. Gosh, we don't no. want y'all to change anything. If you're wanting no. to do this, do it. Just, it's just going to take a, you know, a few months to kind of get adjusted to it. Like, okay, the gas bill's a little bit higher. I mean, I'll, you know, there's things you're going to kind of Oh, propane see. too. Forgot about that. Yeah, propane, but that doesn't like propane is, for us, has been cheaper than, than, than fuel per gallon. I yeah. Mean, I've, I, I mean, I've paid as low as 235 Yeah. Like, a gallon for propane so you use more in the winter time just because that's our main heat source mm -hmm. but i forgot about propane yeah but that's nothing if there's something that we miss that you're an rver and you're like well i pay for this each month let us know we want to be able to help as many people as possible for us that's just kind of how we are we just want to be able to be upfront and honest with everyone and to help as many people out as we can yes. because we know in our situation when we first started doing this we had no clue what we were doing yep. like we were just like all right let's do this and we'll think figure it out yep. as we go. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if you like this video, please subscribe. Half of you that watch our videos are not subscribed. And Keen I We need the help. We need, yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, the main reason why we ask you all to subscribe is because we want to be able to help as many people as possible. And when you subscribe, you're telling YouTube that you think other people would like our videos as well. Yep. For us, we want to be able to share that it is possible to do what we do at our age or really any age because we meet people all the time that say, oh, we couldn't do that. And we want to be able to show them that you can and that it's possible. Mm -hmm. That's why we started this video or this YouTube channel. So anyway. We are going to go get Chase a haircut, and this breeze is just so nice, y'all. Really I mean, look how pretty this is over here. We will see y'all next week. We yeah. out. We out. Kenai. <laughs>